Can you believe that we made it all the way to Matchbox 40? Because here we are. Today I'm creating the clock tower. I know it said clock tower and courtyard, but the courtyard kind of did not fit in the matchbox, so clock tower it is. The clock tower was one of the older features of Hogwarts Castle. It housed an antique clock which had a clear glass dial. The mechanism ran within the tower. There was an old courtyard at its base. That's what it says on the Harry Potter Wiki website. And this can also be seen within the Harry Potter movies and the Hogwarts Legacy game. The first thing I'm going to be doing for this matchbox is building up all these layered of cardstock. This is so that it has more sturdiness for the archway that is the entrance to the clock tower. This consists of multiple arches and I'm going to cut them all out by hand. And I know the order of the arches is actually reversed, but I tried that and my brain did not get there. So here we are and I'm, <laughs> I'm making this. It kind of resembles it though. The clock tower began on the third floor level of Hogwarts Castle because it was placed on a hill. The entrance had a large hall with flights of wooden stairs to the right and left side. The Crossed Ones Dueling Club, run by Lucan Brettleby, was based in the clock tower during the 1890-1891 school year. During the 1993-1994 school year, the clock tower courtyard was where students waiting to visit the village of Hogsmeade would gather. As you can see now, what I'm doing for the matchbox is just striping out whatever I need to cut away. And that is where I will be left over with the archway. And this is the first one. I'm going to do two or three more layers on top of this one. And that's how we get all the different elements of that archway. The pendulum of the clock could be seen slowly swinging on the third level. The first landing was the fourth floor, which contained the clock face and had a long corridor leading to the entrance of the hospital wing. The same corridor connected the tower to the rest of the castle. And in the Hogwarts Legacy game, this is so well done and this description really is brought to life in the game. Up another flight of wooden stairs was a second landing on the fifth floor, which housed the clock's bells and the suspension spring of the pendulum. They were four large gold and copper bells, which chimed and struck every hour. There was another corridor on the landing, which linked the tower to the main castle. There was space between the clock's movement and the dial for the person to either repair the clock or to stand and look out over the courtyard on the balcony. As some students were scared of the many large mechanical gears in the clock tower, they chose to avoid it, creating a solitude that some students preferred.
from some thicker cardboard or cardstock. I actually think that these are two layers of cereal box glued together. I am making some stairs leading up to the archway. Cutting out some circles that I'm going to glue together, which make the pendulum of the clock. Sticking on two pieces of cardboard here, which I reinforce later on as I, I, st I stick it on and then I remove it again because I want to create more depth in the clock tower itself. But for now, I'm going to stick them on and you will see that this actually makes the pendulum of the clock. Clock Tower first appeared in the film adaptation of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and is never mentioned in the books. This may be intended to highlight the theme of time, which plays a central role in the film, and also to foreshadow Harry and Hermione's use of Hermione's time turner at the film's climax to travel back in time in order to rescue Sirius Black and Buckbeak. However, at the beginning of the first book, there is a picture of Hogwarts depicting a tower with a clock. Throughout the books, they do say that there are bells to signal the beginning and the end of classes. However, they never identify the source of the bells. And here I am ready to stick all these archways, all the different uh, levels of it together and make the final archway. The reference image that I have of the clock tower has a window behind the pendulum. So that is what I'm going to cut out here. During the Battle of Hogwarts on the 2nd of May 1998, the clock tower was heavily damaged by Death Eaters, especially on the front side. The clock face was nearly obliterated and the clock mechanism was badly damaged. One of the bells belonging to the clock tower or the bell towers somehow ended up at the viaduct courtyard. The tower was likely reconstructed and the clock mechanism fully restored to working order sometime after the battle concluded. making a frame for around the windows and behind one of them I'm going to put a piece of acetate as well with a little design on it that I draw on with a Posca pen and that will make the window. As I mentioned before, I wanted to give this more depth, so I need to build it up with something. So I found this foam that I craft foam that I found in my Harry Potter matchbox box. I have a dedicated box where I keep all bits and pieces, all bits, small bits and pieces of cardboard and the matchboxes 
in so whenever i want to work on a project i can just grab that and start working and i build it up with these layers of foam behind it now for the front i wanted to decorate it a little bit more because i thought it needed a little bit extra so i have these toothpicks that i cut up and then put a tiny tiny little square of cardboard on top or cardstock rather and that makes small columns then with some bicarb soda and paint, I'm going to add this texture to the entire matchbox, really, because I'm going to apply that wherever you can see anything of this clock tower. I just apply this with a random brush that I have in my stash. And then if you want to preserve this brush, make sure you rinse it out immediately after applying this goop, because it will harden and you will have to throw it out. And then it's finally time to matchbox this thing up, basically. <laughs> Close this matchbox up and make it an actual box. I use Fabri-Tac glue. You can see craft on the bottle, but in Australia here we call that craft glue. The other glue that I'm using, the white glue, is wood glue. With some powdered chalk pastels, I'm going to add more depth and detail to everything in this matchbox, starting by the back window, because I'm going to cover that up with the rest of that archway panel that I made before. And here is the archway panel and I'm adding a very dark gray it's not quite black but a very dark gray and some light pastels to add in some highlights as well and i later go in with some green paint too of course we cannot forget about the pendulum and i'm starting off with a black acrylic paint Moving on after the black with some metallics. I have gold and bronze here. They call it differently in deco art, but gold and bronze. And I'm going to apply that all over the pendulum. Then going in with the bronze for some aging and also with some black after to bring out the details again. And it's time to glue this entire front inside the matchbox because this part is now done. I think it's time to have a look at the final result. And this is it for matchbox number 40. It is a simple one, but I can tell you now that the next one is not going to be this simple. It's going to be quite... Um, quite the thing if you like this kind of content make sure to like comment and subscribe and if you made it this far in this video make sure to leave me some kind of time or clock emoji in the comment section down below all my social media can be found in the description box below and if you're new here welcome don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos and of course become part of the raven family thanks so much for watching stay safe and i will see you all in the next one bye